Good morning all. Uh, the One Instruction computer is a little bit more reliable now. I've put a lot more of the um, power distribution wires on here and it's running a little demonstration program and I thought while it's doing that it'd be quite a good idea, let's move that up for actually, to uh, just sort of explain what this thing is doing in an effort to try and explain how it works. So at the moment it's running a sort of two instruction program. You can see the two instructions appearing alternately on this display here. But let me start down here with um, what you could think of as the program counter, but it's not a counter that nothing is actually counting. So I'm gonna call it the program sequencer. It's a RAM chip buried under all that wire, which holds information on the next address to jump to. So you can see that it's jumping between address uh, zero and one. It's a very small loop of just two memory locations. Now at address zero, that RAM contains the data one. So when that gets latched through this latch, the next address that it jumps to is one. At address one, this RAM contains the value zero. So when that gets latched through, it simply jumps back to address zero. Now these RAM addresses are shared between these two RAMs. These two RAM chips are always sitting at the same uh, address because of these pink wires linking one to the other. So this second RAM here contains the actual computer instructions. And if we look at these two instructions uh, and we read them in hexadecimal, we can make the most sense of what they actually are. You can see that alternately we have 0, 2 and 1, 2. So let's write those down. We've got 0, 2 and 1, 2. Now what does that actually mean? Okay, well 0, 2 is a read and a write number. So it's actually reading from device zero and writing to device two. Now zero is actually an O and two is a Z and one is an I because I don't have any numbered beads at the moment but I've ordered some. So you can see that when the computer executes the instruction zero two, it's copying the pattern of bits from device zero which is a set of switches to a pattern of bits on device 2, which is a set of LEDs. Now you can see that the center two switches here are up, and one of these patterns is that the two inner LEDs are on. The other instruction is 1, 2. So that one reads from device 1, which is another set of switches where the outer two switches are on. And you can see that uh, when that instruction is executed, the outer two LEDs come on. So this one instruction computer has one instruction and it is kind of copy or you might think of it as move or store or even transport. Transport from a readable device, in which case, uh, in this case, it's a set of switches on a buffer, a 74HC541, um, to a writable device. And in this case, it's a latch, a 74HC574 with a set of LEDs attached to it. Now notice that there are two phases here. You can see that these two LED banks are switching together and they're actually activated by the positive going uh, edge of the clock. This is a 555, it will become a 7555. Uh, and that's because uh, on the rising edge of this clock, this latch latches in the next address to this RAM. You can see that in the uh, data part of the computer, these wires here are the data bus it happens on the other edge. This latch, uh, it's actually this latch here, is putting the data onto these LEDs when this LED goes off. And this two phase switching is very important because it allows time for the data from the RAMs to stabilize, go through the address decoders and that sort of thing before it's actually latched to the writable device. So let's see how easy it is to program this computer. I'm gonna turn the power off. Turn the power back on and we should get garbage data in the RAMs. And you can see that uh, we've got garbage data in the uh, GoTo RAM, the RAM that holds GoTo addresses. It's actually got quite a long repeating sequence there. We've also got garbage data in our program uh, RAM, the RAM that holds the computer programming instructions. So let's program this, it's relatively quick. I'll turn off the um, clock uh, single I'll switch it from uh, continuous running to single step. I'll reset this latch so that we know we're at address zero. 
And at address zero, I'm gonna write in the value one, that's written in. When I single step the computer, it goes to address one. At address one, I'm gonna write in the value zero. When I single step the computer, it jumps back to address zero. Now I can free run the computer and you can see that it will alternately go to address zero and address one. Now I could uh, go back to single step in order to program my actual computer instructions in. And remember, I want these zero to two and one to two. Um, but I'm actually gonna do it dynamically because it's so slow, I can program it while it's actually moving. So the first instruction is zero to two. Let's actually put that on the switches, zero, two. Now I'm gonna put that instruction in where this one is zero. So I just need to hit it there. I think I've got it. Yeah, so on location zero, I've got the instruction zero to two, which copies the zero switch bank to the two display. And you can see that it's on there. Now I want the other instruction, which is one to two. Let's put that in. It's zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one, zero. So that's one to two. I need to program that into this RAM chip at the correct point on here where that LED is on. So let's do that, so it's there. And now you can see that I've got my alternating instructions, zero to two and one to two, and we're copying the two switch banks. Here's my pointer um, from these two switch banks alternately into the LED bank. Now, if you're saying, how is this a computer when all you're doing is copying from a bank of switches to an LED? Well, imagine we have an adder chip and we latch on its two inputs an 8-bit uh, value on the A input and another 8-bit value on the D input, a uh, B input. We'll need two latches for that. Um, then the adder will simply add those two numbers together. An adder is just combinational logic, so it'll do it pretty much immediately. We can then read on the back end of the adder with another buffer the sum of those two numbers and then copy from that buffer to some other location on the data bus so that we've added those two numbers together. And if you've seen some of my previous videos on this 8-bit computer, you'll have seen me agonizing over an arithmetic and logic unit, which I've yet to build. That's coming. Um, another problem I was having was I couldn't work out how to generate literals, but I think I found a solution to that. And then the final part of the jigsaw is to make this thing Turing complete, which means that we need conditional branching. And that's gonna work by having a special uh, latch where one of the outputs is linked back to the high order address lines of this uh, RAM chip. Actually, that's the RAM chip there. So that given a certain computation result, like say a carry flag was set, it will actually uh, change the address, the addresses of this RAM. I'm only using an eighth of this RAM at the moment and jump to a completely new block of RAM. So that will be like coming down and branching off to two separate bits of code. You will need to write those two separate bits of code into that RAM and I've yet to work out a way to do that. But hopefully, yes, that can be do conditional branching and therefore it can compute. So that's another little look at my now much more stable one instruction computer. Um, actually, there are still issues with it. Uh, switch five on here doesn't work at all. If I put that down, it actually stays at those two bits up. This, this switch is fine. If I put that one down, yes, I've only got one bit in the middle, but yes, we've got problems with switches. So I'm sort of faking the data on here so that you get something that actually makes sense. Um, but it's coming together. I'm gonna buy some more of these breadboards I'm going to buy lots more of these latch and buffer chips because this really is the essence of the computing section, this section up here. This is just all sequencing and um, program instruction storage. Um, yeah, so this thing will grow substantially in the future. Cheerio.